You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Monday, January 7th. That means just a few days ago, just, uh, what, three, four days ago, the uh, the National March for Life took place in Washington, D.C. Joining us in studio this morning, Peter Slayton, Social Media Manager for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. Thanks. I am not Andy Bates. <laughs> <laughs> That's still a joke. It's still a thing. And also, it's I'm going to keep while, it alive. <laughs> Also joining us by phone this morning, the Reverend Michael Salamink, Executive Director of Lutherans for Life. Pastor Salamink, thanks for joining us. Good morning, guys. Glad to have some time to chat with you both. I know you guys have both been busy staying on top of what's happening at the March for Life, being there, being marchers, and uh, also sharing, uh, Peter sharing on social media for the Lutheran Church mm-hmm. Missouri Synod, uh, some real-time coverage as well. So thank you both for uh, uh, not getting much downtime and uh, turning around and coming <laughs> in. It was slightly less appreciate... real-time than usual this year, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, a little data coverage issue there. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Pastor Salomon, share with us the, the atmosphere and the general message of the March for Life this year. Well, the weather was great. Uh, the atmosphere was largely celebratory. There were um, the majority of the marchers are students who come from high schools and universities uh, across the country and their chaperones. There were drummers drumming and there were singers singing and chanters chanting. There were some pipers and, um, piping also. I saw them. <laughs> there may have been some pipers. There, there were. pipers, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, everybody getting along, peaceful, joyful, hopeful, um, friendly. It was uh, a fantastic atmosphere to celebrate uh, the value of every human being. Peter, what was the message of Lutherans at the March for Life? There was a very distinct thing going on this year for Lutherans. So this year we decided that we were going to kind of have a a slogan of our own. In addition to the eyes of life, we wanted to motivate people to show up, confess Christ, and be Lutheran at the March for Life. And so that's kind of what our materials, that our promotional stuff was organized around because we we want Lutherans to be there. We want to put out a really big push for the LCMS to show up at the March for Life. We also wanted people to know that we're there to confess Christ. Uh, One of the things that Pastor Zagor said in the pre-March rally that we had the night before, I know Pastor Esgit has preached on this multiple times, I think even his sermon um, did that this time, was we're not there to confess the sins of others. We're there to confess our own sins and to then confess Christ in the midst of that march. And so we had various ways in which we confess Christ through our singing, through the actual creed, reciting the creed. Pastor Harrison led us in reciting even portions of the catechism, Mm -hmm. which was a very unique thing that, you know, it's wondered, has that ever been done going down Constitution? He was wondering that as well. Um, And then being Lutheran. Let, let's be who we are because it is such an overwhelmingly Roman Catholic event. They've been mm-hmm. the ones who have taken the lead on this. They're the organizers of it. It's their organizations that are really doing the bulk of the work in keeping this going and getting it going. And so we want to say we're here and we're Lutheran. And you can be Lutheran at this event. You don't have to capitulate anything in order to march for life. We can be who we are as we march for life. Pastor Salamik, there certainly were a lot of Lutherans at the march. Uh, who were some of the other organizations, other groups that you saw represented at the march? Um, all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> so, so as I mentioned, um, there were high schools and university groups from across the country. Uh, Students for Life of America was there. Um, National Right to Life had uh, several of its folks there, of course, uh, our own Concordias, uh, several of them, sent teams. Um, interestingly enough, there uh, there are a couple of my favorite groups, uh, Save the One, which is a community of uh, women who have been conceived in sexual assault or who have conceived through sexual assault. Um, always love what they do. And then there were None, which is Abby Johnson's group that uh, helps clinic workers in the abortion industry get out of that line of work. Um, Rehumanize International is sort of a, a very progressive, um, even feminist uh, pro-life group that was able to stand with everyone. And then Secular Pro-Life, which are uh, those who are not necessarily motivated by religion to defend the sanctity of life, uh, but by science and reason. And so it was great uh, to be united um, 
in in defending that cause for our nation and not just for our church body. One group my wife saw as she was watching the March for Life live feed coverage was a there was the Atheist for Life. They always show up there. But then mm-hmm. she noticed an LGBTQ for Life, wow. um, which she had not expected as somebody who would be there. Hmm. So, yeah, everybody literally, everybody, literally everybody was there. <laughs> yeah. How is this, uh, Pastor Solomon, how is this March uh, different from marches in years past or um, exciting? Uh, or or uh, what, what was it like being there this year? If, was it different from marches in the past? Well, year after year, the average age gets younger and younger, uh, which is very encouraging to those veterans of the cause, uh, veterans of the message who have um, devoted decades to teaching young people the sanctity of life, proclaiming it across our country. Um, Young people are learning. uh, They've listened, and now they are stepping up um, to take the lead. Um, We always notice uh, people coming from around the world, so it's not just uh, Americans who are there. Um, I met somebody from Colombia, someone from Iceland. Uh, lots of different folks have been at the march. Um, it's and 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 it's positive. Um, actually, the the only thing uh, that really gave me pause this year was we saw um, more red hats and more re-election signs than in years past, and that's probably due to the fact that it is an election, a major election year. Um, but for, for Lutherans and for Lutherans for Life, um, we like that the march is largely devoted to a cause and a message, not a particular political party um, or even a, a candidate. So we like to see it continue to, to remain that way because our loyalty uh, is with the message of the truth and not with a particular person. Peter, what year was this? What number was this for you in terms of the March for Life? This was my fourth one. And this was also, uh, this was a significant march in terms of uh, U.S. history as well, Mm -hmm. in that this was the first March for Life that uh, any sitting U.S. president uh, attended and and spoke. Yeah, physically attended. Physically attended, right, right. Uh, What was that like? How did that um, impact the march this year? I know... You had to change locations and things like that. <laughs> it, it impacted a it. Number it of, in a number of ways. Yeah, I think that the, there are two things that I noticed in particular. First, the, the security and the areas that they had cordoned off and sectioned off. It was a huge area that you could not get into without going through the security entrances. So those of us who join the march after it begins so that we can have our group all together. It was slightly more difficult, but at the same time, we were placed really well and made it easy to get in on the march. Uh, the second thing is that I think there was there was an energy and an excitement over that. I mean, everybody was talking about it. Everybody was mentioning it. Um, and it was, I think, the excitement over there's a president who's doing this. So I think some people were excited because it was Trump. Others were excited just because this is new. This is different. This is big. This is this is kind of a seems like a bigger deal. Um, what's interesting is half those people were like, now the media is going to have to cover this because Trump is here. Um, as far as I know, they still didn't give it huge coverage <laughs> from what we're seeing here initially, yeah. though. Um, so that's that's kind of interesting. That's still it, it is still not something the media wants to talk about. The, mm-hmm. the mainstream media, it's still not something that they want to hold up, that they want to highlight because well, frankly, what we're doing does go against the message they want to get out there. Pastor Salamink, uh, how do you see the uh, president's address impacting the March for Life? Um, it, it did energize uh, the group in, in the sense that the current presidential administration um, has enacted and championed policies that have reflected uh, the sanctity of life that people in the March for Life have been defending and advocating for years. Um, And so that is very encouraging for us to know that um, in Washington, D.C., in in our nation's capital, at the highest levels, the the message we are trying to communicate that we stand for is being received, is being reflected, uh, is is being endorsed and enacted. Um, So that I think that gives us um, a sense that we are making a difference, that there is hope. Um, <clears throat> so it, it just it, it gave a charge, I think, and uh, encouraged people who have 
um, you know, sometimes it's difficult. There's there's a lot of ridicule, persecution for people who stand for life. Um, there's there's apathy in the culture in addition to opposition, as Peter mentioned, from some of our uh, cultural institutions. And so it's nice. Um, it's it's uplifting, I think, to our enthusiasm to be able to to have that kind of endorsement and support. Just about a minute left, Pastor Salamink. Uh, there's still some regional marches uh, that will be happening yet this year. What is your encouragement to people who uh, who weren't maybe weren't able to go to Washington, but, but maybe still have an opportunity to participate in a march uh, locally? What is your encouragement to them? I would say uh, reach out, um, show up. The Lutherans have a distinctive voice to bring to our culture's conversations about life issues. We can bring a message of joy and hope into conversations that so often proceed in anger and fear. Um, we can bring the presence of Jesus Christ, uh, the courage and compassion of the gospel, and that is so vital so that uh, the sanctity of life doesn't just become another cause, doesn't just become another wedge by which one group tries to gain power over another, but that this becomes a witness and a testimony to the goodness of our God. Pastor Michael Salonik, Executive Director of Lutherans for Life, thank you so much for joining us on the Coffee Hour today. Thank you guys for having us. Peter Slayton, Social Media Manager for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Peter, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're very welcome. Always glad to be here. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Oh, oh, oh.